The psychology of performance in athletes and soldiers in this fascinating video. How your brain reacts in battle. Brain science in warfare. We delve into the intricate workings of the human brain during moments of intense conflict. Explore the psychological and neurological responses that occur when soldiers face life or death situations. Elite athletes have benefited from performance psychology for decades, learning to become mentally stronger. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that the U.S. military began to realize that it could also be used to improve a soldier's performance on the battlefield. This understanding is largely due to the efforts of then psychology professor at West Point, Lt. Col. Dave Grossman. Many theories on the psychology and physiology of combat were extensively explained in his successful books, On Combat. Personally, I have read, On Combat, and can tell you that it is one of the most incredible things I have studied and read. Being in this field for years and knowing so many military personnel from around the world connects broadly with what Dave Grossman writes in his books. In this video, I will try to summarize the essential details so you can understand how the brain and war are related. We are entirely basing our discussion on the studies of Lt. Col. Dave Grossman. What you hear might not make sense to most people, as they have never had real combat experience. However, open your mind because this knowledge is essential to understand a soldier's mind. Get ready to learn how the brain works in war. People are the key to victory or defeat in war, and the brain is the headquarters of the human body. Accurately targeting the headquarters is one of the most effective strategies to determine victory or defeat on the battlefield. That is why this topic is very important. Dave Grossman starts with an interesting question. Is the fear felt by an athlete in the Super Bowl the same as the fear felt by a soldier in combat? The answer is yes. That is significant because everything analyzed about the brain in the world of sports can be used in combat in war. Of course, sports do not involve lethal combat, but as Grossman says, at a physiological level, there is no difference between preparing for a free fall from the edge of space and preparing to breach a door in an insurgent-controlled sector of Iraq. In both cases, the brain and body go into survival mode, and in both scenarios, even the most capable minds almost always experience fear. Courage is not the absence of fear but the ability to control it. In survival situations, some people manage to concentrate at extreme levels, while others simply freeze. For a soldier, this ability can be enhanced by understanding how the brain and body function in extreme stress situations. Being able to identify these physiological processes and knowing they are completely normal can prevent paralyzing doubt and fear from taking over in the heat of battle. The variety of responses to high stress is the result of changes in the autonomic nervous system, responsible for the automatic response to stimuli and the basic maintenance of the body. When the fight-or-flight response is triggered, the sympathetic nervous system interrupts functions like salivation and digestion while increasing adrenaline production. Once the action is over, a parasympathetic reaction occurs, where the body tries to calm down. The response can vary depending on the duration of the violence or stress. Soldiers who fight for prolonged periods find themselves exhausted and fall asleep because they have burned all their adrenaline. Lt. Col. Dave Grossman says that giving this knowledge to soldiers is a kind of vaccine. Being forewarned is being prepared. If you know these things will happen to your body and mind, you won't be surprised. Over decades, Grossman has interviewed thousands of war veterans and law enforcement officers to develop the theories and concepts presented here. However, this is only an introduction. His books are truly the Bible of the brain in war. Everyone interprets fear differently, says Grossman. In battle, emotions within any combat unit range from excitement to intense concentration and paralyzing anxiety. All those feelings, Grossman explains, are completely normal. For example, a musician might say, I'm a wreck before going on stage, I feel like I'm going to vomit, I have terrible stage fright, but still does a great job. Another musician might say, my guts are rumbling, but I'm driven by nerves. Both experience the exact same thing, but one is overwhelmed by the sensation while the other is excited. Another example is boxing. Two boxers feel fear before the fight, but one manages to control it and turn it into strength and focus, while the other freezes and cannot punch, thus losing the fight. 
The physiological aspect is also closely related to the brain. There is a very common sensation among soldiers preparing for combat, the urge to defecate. Grossman explains this by saying that in the lower abdomen of every human being, there is a place of toxic waste. The body's response is to expel those toxic wastes before a life or death event because if there is trauma to the abdomen, those wastes can infiltrate and infect the wound. So, before the event, stress-induced diarrhea is common. In the moment a confrontation is triggered, the body initiates a dramatic response, starting with the circulatory system which diverts blood away from the surface of the body. This, Grossman explains, is because the body is preparing to absorb damage. It's called vasoconstriction, a mechanical shutdown of blood flow just before the capillaries. The arteries in the body's core hold up to twice as much blood, which is why the face turns white, essentially, we become pale. This redistribution of blood flow helps keep the person alive long enough to finish the fight. The death of a comrade is the ultimate nightmare scenario for any soldier. While the heart is concerned, the midbrain, the part of the central nervous system that coordinates sensory information with simple movements and controls alertness, kicks into gear. Grossman says, there's a dog inside each of us and in the face of sudden and violent death. The dog says, Wow! That could have been us. Pay attention. It's a fundamental law of survival. Before you can help someone else survive, you have to preserve yourself. At its most extreme, vasoconstriction also affects the brain. As blood drains from the face, it also drains from the brain, and rational thought disappears. Grossman calls this, condition black. Condition black, occurs when the heart rate exceeds 175 beats per minute due to the influx of adrenaline from stress. At that point, vasoconstriction allows less oxygen to reach the brain. The midbrain, the part we share with animals like dogs and bears, takes control. If a soldier reaches condition black and lacks proper training, they are likely to freeze. But a well-trained soldier will probably act to neutralize the threat. The roar of the lion is a deafening and stunning event, says Grossman, but the lion doesn't hear its roar the same way a dog doesn't hear its bark. Their ears close off, and so do ours. Gunpowder is our roar. This phenomenon is called auditory exclusion and is the result of the nerve connecting the inner ear and the brain shutting down in the heat of battle. According to Grossman, 90% of soldiers in combat have experienced auditory exclusion. A soldier's vision can also be affected by combat. Most experience tunnel vision. Grossman compares a lion hunting its prey to a soldier focused on their target, but some soldiers develop an intense awareness of their surroundings, similar to a wolf hunting with its pack. This balance between approaches is ideal, according to Grossman, especially in high-level operators like the Los Angeles SWAT. Another vision-related phenomenon is slow motion time, where soldiers report being able to follow the trajectory of a bullet. Grossman also mentions that wounded soldiers can experience irrational thoughts or hallucinations, not as psychotic episodes but as survival mechanisms. These irrational thoughts can be motivating, helping to maintain focus on survival. The autopilot effect is common, where the soldier acts without thinking, and the perception of distance and depth can become distorted. Grossman recounts a story of a police officer in Florida, injured in a shooting, who was motivated by her upcoming wedding, neutralized her attackers, and survived. A soldier's body responds physiologically to combat. Vasoconstriction helps prevent bleeding during battle, but afterward, when the body relaxes, wounds may bleed. It's crucial to understand the importance of tourniquets in severe injuries. For many veterans, the real struggle begins after combat, with feelings of guilt and survival euphoria. The midbrain doesn't feel remorse for killing, but the human brain can generate guilt. Grossman emphasizes that it's normal to feel good after surviving and fulfilling one's duty in combat. Susceptibility to trauma varies, and post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, can arise from events perceived as life-threatening. Symptoms include flashbacks, anger, anxiety, and more. The concept of flashbacks is a Hollywood exaggeration, but involuntary recurring memories are real. Traumatic experiences establish powerful neurological pathways. 
Grossman suggests talking about these memories to separate the associated emotions. One therapeutic technique is to drink water while discussing the trauma, helping the midbrain understand that you are safe. Talking about traumatic experiences, even with friends in a beer, can be healthy. After combat, many soldiers appreciate the calm of civilian life, but some long for the battlefield. Good training can increase confidence and prepare people for the stress of combat. Grossman advocates for pre-battle veterans, individuals with training stressful enough to prepare them for the reality of combat. The best soldiers, belonging to special forces, undergo rigorous trials to select the strongest in mind and body. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and activate the powerful notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, where there is great content every day. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.